So today we're going to spin some baby back ribs on the Big Joe, on the rotisserie, no deflector plates. And I'm going to show you how I maintain my temperature through that cook using this style. Now, in here I have around five pieces of peach wood, good sized chunks, buried in my charcoal. And I've got a fire lighter buried down in there. So I'm just going to start this up now. So this procedure is basically no different from how you would normally do ribs set your vents. Don't worry about using deflector plates. The deflector plates will protect your meat from the heat. All right? It doesn't really have any bearing on your airflow because air still comes in and out and around the deflector plates. You can maintain temperatures just fine without using deflector plates. Very simple. It's no different from how you would normally do it. So we're going to go through that today with vent settings and so on and so forth. So at this point, we're just going to do our normal thing. We lit our fire, leave our dome open, have our bottom vent open, and um, we'll come back in several minutes. So that fire's cranking along now. I'm just gonna chuck a nice big bit of lump just on top, like that. Now I'm gonna close my dome, and I'm gonna leave my bottom vent fully open, my top slider fully open, and I'm just gonna leave it. And we'll come back, once our dome temperature gauge hits 150 Fahrenheit, I'm then gonna set my vents, and I'll show you what vent setting I use. Okay, so we've hit our 150 Fahrenheit mark, and this is where we're gonna set the vents. For the rest of the cook, I'll be talking in Celsius. I only said 150 Fahrenheit because that's the first number on the dial, just to make it a bit easier. So we're going to be cooking it at 125 Celsius today. So at this point, we we'll close our slider, leave our daisy wheel open, and close our bottom vent to I only have it just so my finger can fit through there, just like that. Finger fits through there. If you've got big stumpy fingers, maybe close it a bit more. But that's my setting. Because of your spit rod hole. Now, this is not a Joe rotisserie, this is a homemade rotisserie, but we've all got a hole here to contend with. And on mine, I have a hole on the other side too, because I have a spit rod that goes all the way through. So you have to keep that in mind. Every Kamado is different in their settings. Not every Kamado is the same. So whatever your settings would be normally for a 150 Celsius cook, just keep this in mind because that's basically another daisy wheel hole sitting right there. So just keep that in mind. All right, so it's been just over an hour and a half since we set our vents. As you can see, we're pretty much in the range that I want to be cooking at, but just under the 120 mark. So the daisy wheel is still open. Slider still hasn't changed. Everything's in the same spot. It's very windy here and the Komodo was nice and heat soaked and that's what you want. You don't want to rush your temps getting up the temp, you want to get, let it get there slowly, let that ceramic really heat soak, and you have much less chance of you chasing temps through the cook by doing that. So we're pretty well ready to go. The ribs are in the fridge just chilling out. I'm in no hurry to put them on yet because I think they'll probably take around three and a half hours and I don't want them early ready too soon. So we'll see how we go. What? Can't just have ribs. Jeez, I'm not a heathen. Okay, so it's been around two hours and 15 or minutes or so since um, I set the vents. We're still sitting at just under 125 Celsius. First time I've put baby backs on an actual spit rod before. Normally I put them in a basket, so that was fun. Not as bendy as spare ribs. So we'll see how that spins. It's beautiful peach smoke coming out of there. Okay, we'll just let it spin, come out and check it in a couple of hours, see if it needs some spritzing, and uh, we'll go from there. So we're right on the two hour mark. Just thought we'd come out and have a look, see how we're going. It's not looking bad. I don't think I will spritz tonight. 
it doesn't seem to have really any spots that I want to spritz except maybe on this edge here so just only spritz if I think it needs it this is looking pretty good so I'll come back in another 45 minutes and I'll have another look then oh yeah <laughs> So we're just heading into the three hour mark here and look at that bone. These are looking pretty good. Slight bit of resistance there when I give them a probe. Um, yeah, these are looking good. How good does that look? No spritzing, no spritzing, just a dry rub and that's it. And there, these are done. These are done. These are feeling great. All right, I'm going to take these inside and we'll see how they're going. Damn. <laughs>